The first thing I want to say to all you folks who have come here to show up, your presence made a difference. Your presence made a difference. It made a difference in the DA's recommendation, and it made a difference in the sentence that the judge imposed. The judge could have been given him, could have given two years. We had every reason to think that he would give two years. We're relieved that he did not, and your presence in the courtroom and signing petitions made the difference. Yeah. So thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Next, next speaking is the uh, Don Rodriguez City Council. He helped. He helped. He helped. Yeah. He helped. Well, Martin also was my lawyer when I was also arrested <laughs> during the Vieques, when we did the civil disobedience and in front of the UN. So some, I mean, some people ask me, how do you feel being a politician and supporter? Well, I say, I'm first a social justice fighter yeah. and then an elected official. Yeah. And I can tell you that there's so many brothers and sisters there. <laughs> I think that this is a year where the council has the largest numbers of people that they have a real record of being progressive. Because this day, everyone is called progressive. Because it's something that looks good. So, however, we have to check at the background. So, for me, as someone that I always say that I'm one of those immigrants who not only contribute cheap labor, as I did when I came my first year working at uh Old Henry restaurant, it used to be on West 6th Avenue, and 6th Street and 6th Avenue. Now it's a Gap store. So even though when I crossed by with my two daughters, I never forget that it was my first job washing dishes, making $160 a, day, a week, only Monday off from 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. So that's, you know, that's why I am for me. Cecily is a symbol of that movement. It's the symbol of the working class. It's the symbol of the middle class. Cecily should not spend even one day in Yale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. However, I'm happy that she will not spend the seven, the seven years. Yeah. And I'm calling on the mayor, who I support her, who I support. I'm calling on the police commissioner, who I'm happy that he's a commissioner too, to make changes, to revise how the NYPD is putting charges on assaulting police officers so quick. You know, no one wants to be associated when they heard that someone is accused of assaulting a police officer. And no police officer has been found guilty when they assault Occupy protesters. So, so for me, it is a great day. We have a great lawyer that not only he brings decades of experience, yeah. but also someone that has been a champion also defending social justice fighting. Let's keep our organizing. So Occupy, Occupy movement is not there anymore. But so the Occupy movement will never leave New York City until we close the gap between the 1% and the 99%. Yeah. 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 Will there be an appeal? Thank you for being on the side of peace and justice for more than four decades. Yes. Yeah. 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 Will there be an appeal? On the petition? Will there be an appeal? Uh, it's over 160,000. As of this morning. Will there be an appeal? There will be an appeal. The notice of appeal was filed this morning. Um, and an appeal will be conducted um, to try to get a new trial and remove the stain of a felony conviction from Cecily's record. Yeah. 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 You could have gotten time served. In fact, you should have gotten time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I've said, the punishment that the judge delivered here was ex excessive because the punishment that Cecily got for assaulting a police officer was delivered that night in summary fashion by the police officers who arrested her and assaulted her. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a result, there's been a balance. She's mm -hmm. suffered enough. She's been sentenced enough. She's been punished enough. We didn't need an additional 90 days sentence here. But that is what the judge imposed. I have to say it's better than the two years that we expected that he would impose. Cecily will be able to do this time unless we can get her out on bail pending appeal. Um, she has made an extraordinary adjustment to being on Rikers Island. 
Um, she's shown flexibility and resilience and has made it a life there. Um, she's figured out a way to survive and a way to survive and thrive and to remain a healthy and loving person. Uh, that's Occupy. An extraordinary example of who she is and what she's able to put up with. And I think she gets major credit for being able to figure out how it is that she can live in the hell hole that Rikers Island is. All right. And we also we have a statement from the Justice for Cecily support team that I'm going to read for y'all, or the amorphous body of supporters of Cecily, I guess. Um, so today, Cecily McMillan was sentenced to 90 days in prison for being sexually assaulted by a police officer at a protest, and then responding to that violence by defending herself. We all know that Cecily did not receive a fair trial, and this case will be fought in the Court of Appeals. The sentencing of Cecily McMillan has elicited an array of deeply felt responses from a broad range of individuals and communities. And it has also created a moment to think about what solidarity means. For many of us who consider ourselves to be a part of the Occupy movement, there's first and foremost a simple and deep sadness for a member of our community who has endured a painful and demeaning physical and sexual assault and now has had her freedom taken away from her. And it's painfully clear to us that Cecily's case is not special. Sexual violence against women is disturbingly common, and there's a tremendous amount of over-policing and prosecutorial overreach by police and the courts, enacted predominantly upon black and brown populations every single day, generation after generation. On a broader level, there's been a tremendous outpouring of public support in the wake of the verdict, for which Cecily and the team are truly grateful. We are heartened, too, by the outrage this blatant, heavy-handed attempt to quash dissent has elicited from the public. Reach system. The message this verdict sends is clear. What Cecily continues to endure can happen to any woman who dares to challenge the corporate state, its Wall Street patrons, and their heavy-handed enforcers, the NYPD. We certainly think outrage is an appropriate response from economic and social justice activists and allies who are concerned about the silencing of those who push for change. The DA and the courts want to make an example out of Cecily, to deter us, to scare us, to keep us out of the streets. And we won't let that happen. Right. Right. This ruling will not deter us, it will strengthen our resolve. Yes. At the same time, we recognize that outrage is a blunt tool that can too often obscure important distinctions. Cecily's story represents a confluence of a number of different kinds of structural and institutional oppression that impact different communities in different ways. Expressions of shock at the mistreatment and denial of justice for Cecily, a white appearing cisgendered graduate student, only undermine how rarely we're proven wrong in our presumptions that common privileges of race, class, and gender normativity will be fulfilled. It's no great secret that police brutality and intimidation and railroading in the court system are an all too predictable part of life for many low income black and brown people, immigrants and gender non-conforming New Yorkers, the vast majority of whom receive far less than Cecily in the way of legal support and media attention. And while we're furious that in the wake of a violent sexual assault, Cecily might now be subject to the institutionalized sexual violence of the prison system, it's only on top of our horror at the gross injustice that countless people with significantly less recourse experience daily at the hands of that same system. Yes. While we believe that Cecily's story can be a rallying point around which many others may challenge police sexual violence and the brutal suppression of dissent, we recognize that at best she's a symbol for the broader issues of police brutality and a broken, biased legal system. That is but one example of many awkward scenarios regarding race and gender that played out in Occupy communities since the original occupation of Zuccotti Park. As a movement, we see in this moment a chance to sit with that and to start to reach out in ways that at times may be uncomfortable, to stretch our boundaries in ways that communities that are normally oppressed feel every day. From women's organizations who fight for equal access and combat sexual violence to anti-racist organizations who clearly know how privilege works and have been in the struggle for fairness. The Occupy Wall Street movement has been a catalyst for social and economic change. We claim to be the 99% 
but yet we do not represent them and never will unless we build a principled approach in our activism centered around a love ethic. Bell Hooks describes the love ethic in All About Love as the will to do the will to oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. Love is as love does. Love is an act of will, namely both an intention and an action. Will also implies choice. We do not have to love, we choose to love. Yes. We have to go to groups and organizations and not try to lead, not to be a boutique activist, not to meme, but to get our hands dirty and do the work. That's right. Slavoj Zizek told us during the encampment not to fall in love with ourselves. We have to listen and extend ourselves when these organizations ask, and we must build solidarity and organize. Most importantly, we must continue to keep the focus on the ever-present statement that it is the 99% versus the 1%. This is not a rebuke of the movement or the people involved, as many of us were also involved. We also must recognize that Zuccotti Park changed us forever. People are now working intentionally in communities that struggle and figuring out solutions that benefit those communities, from cop watch to tenant councils to combat high rents and poor living conditions to helping build community gardens. We need to continue and put in the forefront the message of solidarity around building support networks. For the people who still interact with one another in the movement, we are more than friends now. We are family. Yeah. We are a family that is connected because we see each other as a human unit that struggles because we aren't all able to make it alone. This is what everyday people go through. A member of our support team went to Rikers Island yesterday to visit Cecily, and she spoke of the awakening she is having in prison. She said, I'm very conscious of how privileged I am, especially in here. When you are in prison, white privilege works against you. You tend to react when you come out of white privilege by saying, you can't do that, when prison authorities force you to do something arbitrary and meaningless. But the poor understand that's the system. They know it is absurd, capricious, and senseless that it is all about being forced to pay deference to power. If you react out of white privilege, it sets you apart. I've learned to respond as a collective, to speak to authority in a unified voice and this has been good for me. I needed this. We can talk about movement theory all we want, she went on. We can read Michel Foucault or Pierre Baudot, but at a certain point it becomes a game. You have to get out and live it. You have to actually build a movement. And if we don't get to work to build a movement now, there will be no one studying movement theory in a decade, and there will be no movement. I can do this in prison. I can do this out of prison. It is all one struggle. We must show that we are a family, not just by words, but by our actions. Paulo Freire states in Pedagogy of the Oppressed that praxis is the reflection and action upon the world in order to transform it. Through praxis, oppressed people can acquire a critical awareness of their own condition and with their allies struggle for liberation. It is through praxis that we do the things we have learned, that all of our grievances are connected. Our struggles are not the same, but our fates are tied up in each other's. Solidarity is the only way we will see our way through. Thank you all so much yeah. for being here.